Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I want to welcome you to Belmont Redwood Shores School District, specifically our transitional kindergarten and kindergarten informational evening. Uh, thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, my name is Dan DeGuara. I'm the proud superintendent of BRSSD. I'm joined by two amazing principals uh, this evening, uh, Gloria Higgins uh, and, and Sheila uh, at Cipriani. And I want to welcome you both uh, and thank you for joining uh, us tonight. Um, I also want to recognize um, board members that we have in attendance uh, virtually joining us. Uh, I want to just uh, share a, a special thanks uh, to our extended board of trustees um, and for doing an amazing job in uh, supporting um, our school district. So thank you also for joining. Uh, in preparation for tonight, I was doing a little personal reflection as I was driving home this evening. I was thinking it was about 10 years ago uh, that I was getting my oldest uh, into transitional kindergarten. And at the time, transitional kindergarten um, was a little bit new, a little bit unknown. Um, in reflection, I just want to say um, what an amazing opportunity it was to have um, my oldest get an extra year of school. Um, I can say that it's it's really benefited him long term. Um, he's confident. He's doing well academically, um, and things are going uh, better than I could have ever expected. Um, and again, uh, to all of our new families starting kindergarten, um, welcome and a little piece of advice. Uh, treasure this time with your kiddos. It goes super fast. Uh, my oldest right now is 15. Uh, my youngest is 11, almost 12. And those years go by so quickly. Um, just a couple of notes about tonight's uh, session. Um, we will do our best to answer questions via the question and answer uh, feature. The chat feature will not be open this evening, uh, but question and answer will. Um, if we don't answer your question, don't worry. Uh, we'll collect all of the questions. We'll uh, compile them and we'll um, put it online with uh, the video to this session, as well as our other two informational nights uh, tomorrow and the following night. Uh, please note that all three sessions are the same. Um, our principals are um, presenting the same content for all three sessions. So no need to attend um, all three uh, as it is the same information. Um, once children are placed in their school, uh, at their school, uh, our principals will have um, another information session that is specific uh, to the school site itself. Jerome, if we can go to the next slide. Um, and I, you know what, I should take a, take a, a moment to recognize Jerome. Um, he's Jerome Simon is our director of technology. Um, he's behind the BRSSD webinar one, um, helping make sure that we are able to record this and the night goes uh, flawless. So thank you, Jerome. A little bit about the district. Uh, we are a district of seven schools. Uh, we um, like to recognize that we are one district uh, with seven schools, not seven distinct schools. Uh, we have one comprehensive middle school that has sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. We have two uh, K-8s, uh, I should say one K-8 and one transitional kindergarten to grade eight. Uh, the other three elementary schools um, are actually four elementary schools are TK-5 and uh, one kindergarten five. Uh, the only two schools in the district that do not have transitional kindergarten are Nesbitt and Central. And uh, uh, students from Nesbitt and Central will have a TK experience outside of those two schools, uh, but will return uh, for kindergarten. Uh, more information on that as we go along. Uh, we are a district of about 4,000 students, uh, with 31% of our students uh, being Asian Pacific Islander, 11% Latinx, 35% uh, white, and about 1% African American. About 8% of our students qualify for free or reduced meals, but rest assured, all of our students eat every day, uh, breakfast and lunch uh, with the California Universal Meals uh, Program. You'll, again, get more information on that. Uh, Jerome, next slide. 
we are proud of our award-winning schools. Um, each school um, has a comprehensive approach to education, but we are all a little bit unique. Uh, we are the recipient of countywide Kent Awards, uh, National Blue Ribbon Schools, California Distinguished Schools, robotics recognitions, um, all kinds of uh, different things um, our school district has been recognized for. We're really proud um, of the work uh, that our students have, have done to achieve uh, these recognitions. Next slide, Jerome. Uh, it's not all about recognition, but it's about that student academic performance. Um, as you may know, California has what we call a dashboard uh, for success um, that rates schools and school districts on a number of different academic uh, metrics. Uh, we are proud that in both English language arts and mathematics, collectively our, our schools are in the blue category, uh, which is considered um, the top on the five point scale. Next slide, Jerome. And then finally, before I turn it over uh, to Sheila Walters from Cipriani and uh, Gloria Higgins from Sandpiper, um, I just wanna mention um, how much uh, pride I have with the comprehensive education that we do provide. Um, I've uh, said a number of times we rival um, any, any private school out there. Uh, we provide our students an amazing public education with dedicated uh, teachers and staff focused on the whole child, both academic and social emotional uh, wellness. And then finally, we really value our community. We recognize that a lot of learning um, is happening outside of school uh, and it's with our strong parent involvement uh, that really help um, our children thrive. So thank you. And uh, with that, I am gonna turn it over uh, to both Gloria and Sheila to take us uh, through some more of the, the other stuff uh, at the site level. Thank you so much, Mr. DeGuara. I am Gloria Higgins. I am the proud principal at Sandpiper School. As Mr. DeGuara mentioned, we are a TK through eighth grade school. Um, and you'll notice a lot of pride in our schools and in our district. We truly are um, fortunate to be uh, living, working, and um, experiencing the joy of the students that you send to us. So thank you very much for, for enrolling them. Um, we really do have a great time. and We love having them in our schools. Um, we do have uh, standards aligned adopted curriculum um, in all of the four core content areas. So you can see those up, up there. Uh, and we are also very proud to have um, aligned curriculum for social emotional learning and many arts and music opportunities as well. So for language arts, we do use um, units of study, that's readers and writers workshop. And we also have um, a very strong phonics curriculum, uh, super kids for teaching and learning the foundations of reading. Um, for history, we use History Alive, which is run by TCI. Um, very experiential history curriculum. The students really love that. Math Expressions is our math curriculum. Um, and again, standards aligned, very rigorous math curriculum, not only um, regarding the the mechanics of math and the adding and subtracting, but also thinking about thinking like thinking about math like a mathematician thinks about math. Um, we have a very hands-on science curriculum in Twig Science, and then you see our second step curriculum that is our social emotional learning curriculum that is taught by our teachers in the classrooms, and also supported by our counselors. Um, all of our school sites have counselors on site. Um, and again, we mentioned art and music opportunities. We use Leap Art um, for our art opportunities in the younger grades, and we use them for music in the younger grades as well. You can move on to the next slide. Good evening, parents. My name is Sheila Walters. I am the proud principal of Cipriani Wildcats. We are a TK through grade five school, and I welcome all of you this evening to our presentation. Thank you so much for being here. Um, what you see here is a sample of a daily schedule for our transitional kindergartners and our kindergartners. Um, these are very close to what each site will have. Not exact, but um, almost um, exactly. So you'll see, so the times may be off a little bit um, once you know you're assigned school. Um, but just so you know, this is a general daily schedule for our TKers and our kinders. Um, so there will be a, a an opening of our campus and probably an opening bell. 
and um, a time where students gather and the classrooms are opened and classes begin. And then you see that uh, mid-morning, there's a recess for both TK and kinder. And then um, every day our kinders, uh, sorry, our transitional kindergartners get off at, um, sorry, leave school and are dismissed at 12 p.m. Um, and you indicate there that there is lunch served before they are dismissed each day um, in the transitional kindergarten program. It's usually a little bit after that recess time there that you see. And then for our kindergartners, um, similar opening of the, um, the school day, um, a mid-morning recess for them. Their lunchtime is around 11.30 and um, they are dismissed around uh, 1.30 throughout the school district. Um, a reminder that Wednesdays is um, an early dismissal for our kinders through grade five students. And again, across the district, that's around 12.15 in the afternoon every Wednesday. All right, we are also very proud to be able to offer universal meals to all of our students. Um, this is available to students regardless of need, regardless of age, um, regardless of grade. So free breakfast and free lunch is offered on all school sites. Um, breakfast is part of our instructional time. So that is served in the classroom with teachers. Um, and they're usually working on things like morning work, or there might be a morning meeting that's happening during that breakfast time. Lunch is not part of our instructional time, but students do get lunch during the day. Um, and again, it is free to all students. You will receive some communication about how to enroll um, in the meals program around August. Um, it's important to note that if you are experiencing any kind of financial difficulty, you may or you should um, still apply for free and reduced price meal status. Even though our, our meals are always free to students, you may be eligible for other services and programs if you are eligible for that free and reduced price meal status. You can go on to the next slide. Thank you. So parents of transitional kindergartners, preparing them um, for TK. And these are all good habits to have. Um, these are things that are life skills, as well as um, preparing them for academics and being part of a group here at school and learning a, basically what is, how do we behave at school and what does school look like, right? Um, so uh, preparation would include things like bathroom skills, being able to um, take care of their um, putting on clothes and securing them, taking them off appropriately, um, practicing good hand um, hygiene and other ha um, hygiene, um, especially here at school when they're around so many people, adults and others, and um, learning to follow a group plan and, and simple directions, um, cooperation skills also. And it's always good to help them learn how to open snacks and lunch. And, you know, what really helps also is making those things very easy for them to open. There's always helpful adults to help them with those things, but um, maybe doing some practice around that, um, preparing their snacks um, uh, as part of their school day for prior to coming to school and just making sure that they can um, access those, um, their, their nutrition. Um, so just some optional um, ways that you can prepare your transitional kindergarten to begin school this fall. And following on with that, we have some tips for kindergarten as well. And I have to say, Ms. Walters, I don't know about you, but the most common question I am asked at lunchtime duty is, can you help me open this, please? Yes. My most common answer is, let me see you try yourself first. Indeed. I'm always happy to help, but we want to build that independence for our students, and that's what this is all about. Mm -hmm. So if you have a student entering kindergarten, um, being able to write their name is a good thing to practice with them, recognizing and writing letters, cutting with scissors, taking turns in social situations. Games are a great way to practice turn taking and then recognizing counting and writing numbers to 10. And I did see a question come through the Q&A about um, students getting out of cars. We do ask that if you're using the drive through loop that students are able to get themselves out of the car by themselves. If they need help getting out, there are parking spaces at all sites. They're limited, but there are spaces at all sites where you can park 
help them get out and walk them in. We just don't want you stopping in the lane in the drive through You can move on to the next slide, Jerome. Uh, so next steps, we'll go over the registration timelines. Go ahead. All right, so the enrollment information, um, am I correct in saying that parents are getting these the copy of these slides? By the way, I just wanna make sure. Okay, very good. <laughs> um, the um, open enrollment portal is open right now for the 24-25 school year. And you'll see there that there is um, the uh, link on our website for online enrollment. Um, all students must complete this. Um, parents need to complete this for their students and bring the printed um, version of that form along with some original copies of required documents, which um, I'll go through at, um, at the bottom of the slide here, um, to register in person per the dates listed on um, the enrollment timeline. So you have the, um, the option there. Um, if you're registering, uh, registering, you will need to have all of the following items at the time of registration. For online enrollment, um, you need uh, an ID, a parent ID, driver's license, ID card or passport, the student's original birth certificate or passport, and some proof of residency that you are here in the Belmont Redwood Shores School District. Um, and that would entail a property um, tax bill or a lease um, or rental agreement. And one of the two following, like the um, a, a PG&E, um, a water bill, a cable, um, any type of um, service that uh, you have at your home um, is um, something, uh, all the options are there for you. Another um, to bring is immunization records for our students, and there'll be information of what um, immunizations they need to begin school um, in that enrollment uh, information. And any active um, individual education plans or 504s that may have been begun in preschool or uh, transitional kindergarten for your students um, that need that extra support. We do have a few of those frequently asked questions already here answered for you. Um, yes, the enrollment packet must be completed, printed and signed at the time of registration. And you have to have all the required documents at the time of registration or you'll need to make another appointment. Um, you do need to have an original parent or caregiver with an ID present at the time of registration. I saw a question about do both parents need to be present? No, one parent is enough um, for registration. Um, your bills proving residency must be under that parent caregiver's name and your immunization records have to be up to date and with you presented at that time of registration. Um, if your residency is not in the parent or caregiver's name, you can get documentation um, that is provided by the home owner or the renter and a shared residency affidavit that is linked there. Um, any questions that you have, um, our staff at the district office and at sites are always happy to help answer those questions. And again, many uh, much of this information is on our district website. That's brssd.org. You can go ahead, Jerome. Mm -hmm. Speaking of these wonderful people in our district, here they are. Um, at the district office, um, Victor Ramirez is our enrollment person extraordinaire. And there is his contact information. And then you'll see at the different sites, these are our AAs, our administrative assistants or secretaries. Um, they are amazing people and they can always help with any question you have um, leading up to and including when you arrive at our school site. So here is their contact information. We're always, um, and of course, all of our administrators are always willing to help as well. Go ahead. All right. All of our schools have some after school child care options. They're all a little bit different. So um, depending on the school that you are assigned to, you may need to contact different agencies, but you can see the contact information there. These organizations are not part of our school district. They have outside registration processes. So you're gonna wanna contact them directly. And I would say contact them early because they do fill up. Um, so you can see those there. I don't think I need to go into each of those, um, but we do have opportunities at each school site for aftercare. 
Um, age uh, ed eligibility, very important. Uh, and sometimes it's hard to keep track of these things. But if you look at the middle um, oval there, the green one, which is um, we're anticipating the school year coming up, um, our transitional kindergarten programs are open to four-year-olds whose fifth birthday occurs between September 2nd and June 2nd, and that's inclusive. And then if you go over to the circle there, um, our eligibility for kindergarten this fall is open to all fifth um, students whose fifth birthday occurs by September 1st. So check those DOVs, those dates of birth and uh, just make sure you're registering for the correct program. Um, you can go ahead to the next school, Jerome, or the next slide rather. Uh, this next section of the presentation is really about the amazing partnership that we have with families in our school district and at each of our schools. So you may have heard if you're a returning parent with older students about school force, and PTA is pretty universally known among parents. Uh, but these are two um, very supportive organizations that have partnered together to make sure that our students have a truly enriching, um, exciting experience here at school. So School Force is our educational foundation, and they are really here to help us bridge the gap between what the state provides us um, in funding and what we know our students truly need to have an exceptional experience. PTA has a mission that is really around advocacy for children and making sure that um, all of the experiences kids have at, at um, school are supported by the community and enjoyed by the community. And they partner together in what we call the education commitment campaign. Um, so we have one ask in the fall where we ask for a donation to the education commitment campaign. Um, and part of that donation goes to support each school's, excuse me, PTA. And the remaining part of that donation goes to support the entire district through school force. You can move on to the next slide, Jerome. Shall I keep going on this, Sheila, or do you want uh, to jump in? Sure, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> All right, great, thanks. Um, I was thinking it was more of an add-on to the ECC, but it is a little bit different. Um, we say often, and it is very true, that as parents, you are your child's first and most influential teacher. There are so many ways for you to be involved in their education, and the more you are involved in their education, the stronger the message you send to them that education is important. So there's PTA um, PTA opportunities for volunteering, school force opportunities for volunteering. You could be a room parent. You could supervise on field trips. We always need yard duty supervision. There's special events. So many more things that you can be doing um, at school, and we love to see you, um, and your kids love to see you when you come to visit. And uh, continuing on this theme, um, parents make such a big difference and they make things happen that enriches your students' uh, education. And we're very proud to, sit, to say and very thankful that our school force and PTA raised more than $3 million um, to invest in our schools and our students um, during this year so far. Um, together, we build wonderful and excellent sites and a wonderful opportunity for each and every student at each and every grade level and school. And it's through um, both this partnership of volunteerism and donations that we can serve and really go beyond just basic education and provide your students with school counselors and fully stocked libraries and opportunities for field trips and enrichment activities. Um, it's just such a, um, a wonderful place to be, and it's something that's so special to us. And uh, again, as a person, um, as an administrator, I just want to thank um, all of our, our volunteers in our school district, and particularly at my school. It makes such a huge difference. It truly is a partnership. Um, my theme this year is building connections because I'm a new administrator here in the district, and that connection is so important between home and school and the support that all of you give um, us and your students and all of our students every single day. So you'll hear more about this in the, um, the months to come. 
All right, just a little snippet about what parents say about our school district and schools. Um, we'll a little brag a little bit here, but um, we are very proud that um, we hear from parents and students all the time about how kind um, our community is and how um, loving and caring our, our schools are. Um, so caring, supportive adults, um, schools filled with kindness, fostering the whole child. Yes, we absolutely focus on those academics and make sure that students are masters of all the standards that that um, are expected for our students. But we also pay attention to that social emotional aspect of our students and the two really go hand in hand. Um, we love in our community that we have a common vision for the future. Um, we have a strong tradition of excellence, thanks to the community, thanks to you as parents and the, the amazing students that you send to us. And um, we really appreciate how the community um, supports all of our students in thriving. All right, I guess we got to the question time. Um, <laughs> Mr. Deguara, were there any others that you thought we needed to, we could address now? Um, I'm happy to share that I think I was able to answer all of the questions that came up uh, just in time as they, they uh, came up. Uh, so I just want to say thank you to all of our families. You are going to have many, many more questions. Tonight was just the start um, of a long journey. Um, no. Uh, that between uh, now and, and spring, uh, you're going to get communication from the district in terms of your TK or kindergarten placement school. Uh, our schools will then be setting um, additional uh, time to answer questions and talk about school specific information um, so that we can uh, be ready to begin uh, come August. So uh, I just want to uh, end by saying thank you again for joining us. Um, you are part of an, of an amazing uh, school district, and we are so very fortunate uh, to be partnering with you. Uh, I want to extend my thanks uh, to our, our board of trustees who um, are in the audience, um, as well as to Gloria and Sheila uh, for joining us tonight. And I want to wish everybody a wonderful evening. Thank you. Uh, please give it a few days for the video to post, uh, as well as the presentation. Um, and any additional Q&A uh, that we need to, to follow up on, we will do. Thank you so much and have a great evening. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Again, I wanna welcome you to Belmont Redwood Shore School District, uh, specifically this evening to the Transitional Kindergarten and Kindergarten Information uh, session. Uh, welcome to everyone and thank you for joining us on this rainy evening. I wanna um, introduce uh, two of my colleagues joining us. Uh, first, Chuck Donovan, the principal at Central Elementary School. Uh, second, uh, Principal Ryan Hanson Vera, principal at Nesbitt. Uh, and my name is Dan DeGuar, and I'm the proud superintendent of Belmont Redwood Shores School District. I also want to recognize uh, the name that you see uh, on your screen, probably, uh, BRSSD webinar. Uh, that's Jerome Simon, our director of technology. He is the magic behind the screen that makes um, all of our tech uh, work uh, so flawlessly. So thank you, uh, Jerome. I also want to just take a moment to recognize our board of trustees, which I understand are attending uh, this session uh, virtually, just like our parents. Uh, thank you to our amazing uh, board of trustees. And then finally, I want to start by just uh, with a little personal reflection. Um, as I was thinking about tonight's um, event, um, I was rewinding uh, my life about 10 years ago. Uh, where my oldest uh, was starting transitional kindergarten. He's currently a freshman in high school now, um, but uh, you know, about 10 years ago, we were starting the journey that you are today. And, and transitional kindergarten was just a ma an amazing opportunity uh, for him. Uh, it gave him an extra year of school. Uh, really, he's grown up to be an amazing young man that's, that's confident um, and excelling in, in all areas. Uh, my other, my second uh, son, um, he's in sixth grade, so again, I remember attending uh, these kinder orientation nights, again, as a parent, um, to just get our students' education, my son's education, uh, kicked off on the right foot. Uh, so thank you again for being here tonight. 
Uh, a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, tonight's session is one of three. We had one yesterday. We have one tomorrow. Um, all three sessions are identical. Uh, they're facilitated by different folks, uh, but they all are working off the exact same content, the exact same slides. We will be posting videos on the district website, um, as well as a link to this presentation for additional information. Um, tonight's chat feature um, has been disabled, but you can feel free to ask uh, questions uh, via the Q&A feature um, on the webinar. Um, I will do my best to answer all your questions um, as we go through the presentation. Any questions that we're not able to answer, uh, we will post um, on our district website. And with that, let's go ahead and jump into the, the slideshow. Uh, so a little bit about us. Um, we are one district uh, comprised of seven schools. And the really important piece of that is we like to think of ourselves as one, because whether you're at Fox Elementary on one side of the district or Sandpiper or Redwood Shores on the other side of the district, you're gonna get the same fantastic high quality education across the board. Uh, we have seven schools, uh, two of our, uh, so I should say one of our schools is, is TK grade eight. One of our schools is grade K-8. We have another elementary school that is K-8, and the rest of our elementary schools are TK-8. So I'll just share, calling that out, um, Nesbitt and Central do not have transitional kindergarten. Uh, that is simply because of uh, space um, availability and site um, uh, flexibility. Uh, students that are part of the Nesbitt or Central communities will get access to high quality TK at our other schools and be priority enrollment for kindergarten at both Nesbitt and Central. So don't let that discourage you. Uh, we are a district of about 4,000 students. Uh, we have approximately 31% of our students are um, Asian Pacific Islanders, 11% Latinx, 35% white and 1% African American. 8% um, of our students qualify for free or reduced meals, uh, but I will say 100% of our students have the opportunity to eat free breakfast and lunch every day, and we'll, we'll, we'll get to some information um, on that a little bit later. Um, each of our schools, um, always, every year, we receive distinguished um, recognition uh, from California Distinguished Schools, um, Central, Redwood Shores, Ralston, Cipriani, Sandpiper, those are the most recent. Um, Nesbitt, Sandpiper, um, really many of them have received uh, Kent Awards, which is a county distinction. We've received Robotics Awards and um, Achievements in Motion Awards. Um, and I think that just speaks to the, the comprehensive education that's provided district-wide. Next slide, Tom. Thank you. Uh, in, ad in addition to the, the accolades we receive, we are most proud of uh, the academic performance uh, that our students uh, show. Uh, last year on the California um, uh, assessment, um, our students ranked in the blue category, which is level five out of five um, on the California dashboard in, in both language, arts, and math. Uh, the highest that you can can achieve. We're extremely proud of that. Uh, but we also recognize that uh, learning is is um, you know we emphasizing the whole child. So we really have um, a whole child approach, emphasizing both academics and social emotional health. We're proud to have a robust team of counselors, social emotional curriculum. We have amazing teachers uh, and dedicated staff who ensure that our students, uh, reach all of their goals. And then finally, the third component um, and one of the most important is strong parent involvement. Uh, we want all of our families to be involved uh, with their children as part of their education. Um, we know that our parents, um, alongside their teachers, ensure that uh, our students uh, attain the, the highest achievement possible and, and, and thrive. So um, that's a little bit a, a big picture um, piece. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to our two principals uh, to lead us through really the nuts and bolts and day to day of uh, school. Awesome. Thank you, Superintendent Doug Guara. Again, I'm Ryan Hansenberg. I'm the principal at Nesbitt School. 
I'm really looking forward to talking with you about the awesome adopted curriculum that spans across our district. One real strength is that from school to school, we really have a strong adoption of materials and curriculum that um, we fully implement. So um, we use Readers and Writers Workshop. Um, we have an awesome foundational phonics program called Super Kids. We have a TCI History Alive um, curriculum that is very popular and really gets the kids engaged. We use math expressions, twig science, and second step is our social emotional curriculum. So really we're focused on academics, but also making sure that our curriculum touches the well-being of all of our students. Um, and also we have um, a really strong connection with the Common Core State Standards and working hard to make sure that all of our early adopted curriculum is aligned with our school standards. So as your little new one is starting school with us, it's important to understand some of the schedules. So transitional kindergarten um, is on a, a half day. So school <clears throat> starts at 8.20 um, and then dismissal is at 12 every single day. Lunch is offered um, for our TK students before dismissal and also breakfast is served in the classroom. Kindergarten, their day is a little bit longer. Um, they do have lunch on campus and some really great opportunities for social play. So school runs from 8.20 to 1.30, and that's a daily dismissal um, of 1.30. So um, kiddos are really having a, a nice, well-rounded kind of experience when they're here at school. Um, really great foundational skills take place as well as all of those social opportunities. Just note that our district um, engages in minimum day dismissal every Wednesday. So um, in K through five, kids are dismissed at 12.20. Um, so on the, that doesn't affect TK, but on Wednesdays, kindergarten is also dismissed at that 1220 release time. Great. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, again, I'm Chuck Donovan, principal at Central. Um, so in order for kiddos to do their best learning, they need to have full stomachs. And so we offer uh, free breakfast and lunch at all of the school sites. Uh, breakfast in class is a part of the instructional day. Uh, lunch is served outside of the instructional day, uh, time, and that goes along with midday recess. Uh, more info on this will be coming out in August when we uh, kick off next school year. Um, and please know that uh, families with limited income may qualify for additional services and programs. So it is important to complete the applications for free and reduced uh, meal status just to make sure. Um, lastly, please make sure that with the meals, you're having conversations with your kiddos because we want all kiddos to eat, but it's important to know like what they're liking at school and what they're not. So please keep those lines of communication open so we can keep feeding uh, our kiddos so they can do their best learning. Um, in terms of getting your kiddo ready for TK, so this is a huge transition and there's some small incremental steps to give them the independence and have them ready to conquer TK. So uh, one, independent bathroom skills is huge. That's a must. Um, learning to follow the group plan. So while we all love our individuality, it's important for the little kiddos to start being able to follow group directions. Uh, this is a big one. Uh, button, snap, and zip clothing. It is a process, so start that process now. Uh, washing hands, and then this is a huge one, is opening snacks and lunch. So just making sure that things that they're sending, uh, they are typically able to open on their own or with minimal adult assistance. <clears throat> And then for kindergarten, we are really making sure we're building their independent skills, but also their them being comfortable on a large school campus for the first time. It's really important that your child is able to articulate their first and last name. Often when the little guys join us on campus, an adult greets them or asks them, what's your name? Whose class are you in? How old are you? Um, they tend to freeze up a little bit. So really practicing with your children, then being able to um, clearly state their first and last name is a wonderful skill. Um, and also being able to say their teacher's name. So once you get those assignments, really practicing. I also recommend taking your child to your assigned school and walking around the campus with them. Take them on a walk on the weekend, get familiar, try to find their classroom room number, Number, talk about maybe pickup spots or where mom and dad will be waiting so that they feel really comfortable. Um, also, really, uh, we're talking about being able to say your first and last name, really talking about those pre-writing skills. It is okay if your child is coming into kindergarten, not knowing how to write their name, not knowing all their letter formations. That is okay. 
but certainly getting them motivated and familiar that they're going to be playing with letters and experimenting and get them used to um, writing with paper and pencils and things at home um, will really get them set off on the right foot for kindergarten. Um, we practice a lot of social parallel play skills taking turns, sharing items, um, making sure that we're using toys appropriately. So really talking about those things, they're going to be interacting with lots of different children. Um, we really practice some basic cutting skills and using other kind of um, uh, markers and putting caps on and really making sure that they're able to take care of those supplies on their own. Sounds kind of simple, but really these are the foundations for pre-writing. We want This is what we want to maintain in kindergarten. And then also um, we want them to start being able to count and write all of their numbers to 10. So working on those things now, getting them motivated and ready um, is the best way to kick off kindergarten. So it's um, there are some registration um, kind of deadlines and requirements that we wanna make sure you are aware of. The best place to look for any of your questions is the BRSSD website. The enrollment portal is open for you. It is important that yes, you're completing the online forms, but that you have all of the required documents ready when you register for school. Um, if you have questions about those, you wanna go to brssd.org online enrollment. You can find everything there. Um, there's a list of required documents that you are going to need when you fill out the online enrollment form. You actually need to bring the completed copy of that form, so print it. And then you're going to need to bring um, a driver's license. You're going to need to bring your student's birth certificate or passport, and it cannot be a copy. You need your proof of residency. That can be in a few ways. It could be a bill or a lease or a rental agreement. Um, and then two of um, two bills that have your name and address on them. Um, we need your child's updated immunization records. And if your child is coming from an outside program um, and they have received any special education services, whether it means either speech or OT, any of those things, we, we like to know that during the registration process so that we can get them the services that they need. There are um, some frequently asked questions that we've gathered during these sessions that we wanna make sure you have the answers to. So um, I'm just gonna go through them really quickly. So first, um, the online enrollment packet, like I said, complete it online, but also print it. Um, and we sign it at the time of registration. So it's kind of like a double backup. So please make sure you're printing it and completing it online. All of the required documents need to be present at the time of your registration appointment. So don't all of those supplemental documents, please don't come to the registration appointment without them. It'll just delay the process. Um, the original parent or caregiver ID has to be present at the time of registration. So we need to have your most recent identification. Um, Again, all the immunization records must be up to date and presented at the time of registration. It's a requirement of being able to enroll in public school. And lastly, if residency is not with a parent or caregiver, the residency documents must be shared. And there is an affidavit that you'll need to fill out. All of those are available for you online. And if you have any questions, again, phone a friend at the district office, like this is the time we're working with families, getting them registered for school, and we're here to help you. All right, speaking of help, we have a delightful group of administrative assistants who are waiting to help you get registered uh, to get your kiddo to uh, TK or kindergarten. Uh, at the district office, it is Victor Ramirez, uh, Joan Durstein at Central, who is delightful, go Joan, uh, Julie uh, Bakhtegan over at Cipriani, Fox Maria Acevedo, Linda Fonseca at Nesbitt, Monica Rubio at Redwood Shores, and Carmen Rogers over at Sandpiper. So you can come through uh, any afternoon and register your kiddo at the district or er, uh, at the uh, school offices and please make sure that you bring all of the required documentation when you come so you can do it in one trip. All right, we have a variety of childcare options for uh, TK and K families. Uh, we have champions that are at Sandpiper. Um, there is also the Sandpiper Youth Club. 
uh, San Carlos, Belmont Aftercare, which they're at Fox and Central. Uh, at Central, they are the only on-site aftercare provider. Uh, and then there is Footsteps, which is, it runs at Cipriani, Redwood Shores, Nesbitt. Um, and so that all functions at a Barrett Community Center. And so that is all, and they also serve Central. And so what that looks like is they have vans that pick up the kiddos at Central at pickup time, and then they bring them to the Barrett Community Center just down the hill. Um, Couple very important notes about age eligibility. Uh, so TK is open to four-year-olds whose birthday occurs between September 2nd and April 2nd, uh, including them. Uh, and that's for uh, this school year. This is uh, for coming school year. TK is open to four-year-olds whose fifth birthday occurs between September 2nd and June 2nd. Uh, TK open to four-year-olds whose fourth birthday occurs by September 1st. Um, kindergarten is open to all whose fifth per birthday occurs by September 1st. Uh, just a reminder that this will be online if you didn't catch all of that. <clears throat> so as a new member of our community, we want to make sure you really understand when Mr. DeGuara shared that like parent involvement and communication is important. That really is truth. Um, not only am I a principal in this district, but my daughter is also a second grader in the district. So like Dan was sharing a bit of his story, I also have seen um, the amazing impact that parent involvement has had in this district for my own child's education. And one of those ways that we do that is the amazing um, nonprofit organization, Education Foundation, School Force. Um, School Force really works um, to bridge the gap in funding and to work with our school district and our local PTAs to um, really ensure that our students receive the best programs and services possible. And then our PTA, our PTA's mission is really to impact the lives of the students and families at each school. We think about School Force as the house, and then our PTA is all the beautifully decorated furniture that makes it feel like a home. So, um, and all of this is because of our parent volunteers. So I'll share a little more information. Next slide. So the first thing to remember is that we are a commu community-based schools. We want our parents in the classrooms. You are your child's first teacher and you're, the, you're the first influential adult in their life. Um, and so we can really continue that bridge, particularly with TK and kindergarten. There are tons of opportunities for parents to come into the classroom. Um, we have room parent opportunities, lots of opportunities to volunteer, going on field trips, working the book fair, um, participating in school site council and ELAC. It is the voice of our parents of our newest students joining because our goal is that you're with us to and through eighth grade. Additionally, um, school force and PTA, it's important just understanding when we're when we're doing fundraising asks with school force and PTA, they've raised more than $3 million to invest in students for this school year alone. Um, school force works very hard in our community. This is what makes BRSSD so special. It's the donations from our families that make our school district so great. It's a very unique wonderful kind of experience for kids, seeing the resources that our students are able to be provided because of this amazing connection with School Force and PTA. So I love that tagline there, that together we build better Belmont Redwood Shores schools and every school in every grade for every student. And that's really the mission. Um, there's no competitive feature in when we raise funds for our schools. We're raising funds for our district so that our grade level programs are top notch and that starts in TK and kindergarten. And then, of course, we love to share some accolades. So these are things that BRSSD parents are saying about schools. Um, you'll have the opportunity to do this, too. Our district participates in a survey called the Youth Truth Parent Survey, and every family gets to share their feedback, and we really take those um, pieces of feedback to heart, and, and we, we really take the extra mile in making sure your voices are heard. So here are some great things that parents are saying about our community. They feel that our schools across the district are filled with kindness and that foster really that whole child development, and there's um, lots of focus on social emotional learning. Um, our community definitely has a common vision for the future, and our district has done a lot of great work um, around that common vision practice. Um, we have a tradition of excellence, as you can see. Um, we meet our standards. Our students are performing um, very well academically, and we are receiving lots of accolades as a district. And then, of course, our parent community um, is really what helps our children thrive. And it's because of your support and your investment in your child's education that our public schools 
feel like the best private school you can ever send your kid to. And I heard that pause. I was busy uh, uh, responding to a couple of questions. Um, I can just go ahead and share this um, here. Um, appointments are between 12, the question came up about uh, morning versus afternoon appointments. Um, our appointments at the district office are between 12 and 4 p.m. Um, of course, if you're not able to come to those, dur uh, those during those hours, uh, please just reach out to the district office um, and uh, we'd be happy to assist you and, and look at um, some other options. Um, I'm looking for other questions. Um, I will mention if any, any of our families are coming uh, to BRSSD from outside and their children have IEPs or 504s, uh, it's important that you share that IEP or 504 uh, with um, our team when you register. We want to make sure that all of the services are connected uh, prior to your, start, uh, your, school, your child starting school. Um, it also never hurts to make sure that you know, in that first week of school, you share your IEP or your 504 directly with your with your classroom teacher. And um, if if your child has any other special needs or there's any other um, additional concerns that you have, uh, please reach out to our team and we'll we'll help you um, uh, navigate uh, that process. Um, there is an uh, so a question came up in the chat. Um, is there an attendance requirement for TK? Um, formally, um, children are only required by state law to come to school um, at age six. Uh, TK and K are not compulsory. However, that said, um, we feel that it is critical that anybody eligible for TK or K um, attend school regularly and every day. Um, we do um, follow our normal um, absenteeism process and our attendance review for our TK students and our K students, uh, just like we would um, any of our first through eighth grade students. So um, while it's technically optional via the state, um, we follow pretty strict attendance requirements and require daily attendance. I'll pause there, see if we get any other questions in the chat. Um, a question came up about um, uh, multiple children um, attending BRSSD schools. Um, yes, we want to make sure that families um, have the opportunity to send their children uh, to one school, if that's possible. Uh, clearly, if you have a TK and an eighth grader, it is possible at one of our schools, um, but uh, perhaps not the others. Um, we do offer sibling uh, priority, meaning we take a look at all the registration for siblings. We make sure that they're matched up um, at the school where their uh, brother or sister attend um, so that families have um, hopefully one drop off. Uh, let's see, uh, space, um, um, it says, sorry if I missed this, but there uh, is there space for children that are eligible for TK for 24, 25, or will be there be a lottery and uh, preferential to siblings? We will accommodate all of our students who are TK eligible via the state um, birth date requirements. Um, we do quite a bit of planning in advance. We've done demographic studies. We look at trends year over year, um, and we are planning for all of our kiddos, again, that qualify for TK to join us in BRSSD. Again, uh, Nesbitt and Central do not have TK classes. Um, they will, those students will be attend, attending one of our other schools, uh, but will automatically roll back to Nesbitt or Central, uh, one of their two closest home schools, um, for kindergarten. I think that looks like the Q&A is wrapping up. Um, I want to thank our two amazing principals, Principal Donovan, Principal Hanson Vera. Um, thank you for joining tonight. Um, I want to welcome you again to Belmont Redwood Shores School District. Uh, you are in for a treat and 
uh, many, many, many fun um, years ahead. So welcome to VRSSD. If you have any other questions, uh, please feel free to reach out and uh, we will see you in the fall. Thanks so much for attending. Bye-bye. Thank you everybody for joining us tonight. Welcome to VRSSD's TK and K information session. This is the third of three sessions that we're hosting this week. Um, my name is Julie Eastburn. I'm the Director of Human Resources and Administrative Services at the District Office. And tonight I'm joined by Gloria Higgins, the Principal at Sandpiper, and Matthew Nagel, the Principal at Redwood Shores. Good evening, everyone. Just a little bit about us, if you um, don't already know, you may know this, but we have seven school sites um, in the district that range from the bottom of Redwood Shores, um, one school on both sides of the shores, and all the way up to the top uh, near 280 and Ralston uh, Fox Elementary. So our district is narrow, running from 101 all the way up to 280, uh, just about. Um, we have six elementary schools, two of which are TK-8 and one middle school, Ralston, grades six, seven, and eight. I'm gonna move this icon out of the way so I can read the stats a little bit. We have about 4,000 students. Um, that fluctuates from time to time. Uh, about 600 of them are unduplicated, meaning they are either they either qualify for free and reduced lunch, are English learners, or are foster youth. Um, our ethnic ethnicity mix is 31% AAPI, 11% Latinx. 35% white and 1% African American. And about 8% of our population qualifies for free or reduced price meals. You really can't go wrong living here in Belmont and Redwood Shores. Some of you may live um, in parts of San Carlos and San Mateo that are part of our school district. We have great schools. So um, no matter where you land, you are part of an award-winning school. Like I said, we have about 4,000 students in seven schools. Cipriani has received a Kent Award, Fox, a National Blue Ribbon School, Nesbitt, a Science for All Kent Award, Redwood Shores received a Kent Award for their preschool buddies program, Central received one in 2020 for the Blue Wave Kent Award. Sandpiper received a Kent Award and um, an Excellence Award at the Robotics World Championships. And Ralston is a National Blue Ribbon School and received a San Mateo County Achievement in Motion Award. Um, and we have a lot of California Distinguished Schools. So again, no matter where you end up, you can't lose. Um, just a reminder, um, really quick before I go on, our chat is closed, but our Q&A is open. If you have a question, you can place it in the Q&A, um, and we will try to monitor it the best as possible. District-wide, our academic performance is almost off the charts. We are scoring in the highest um, area for English and language, or English language arts and math. You can find more information on the California dashboard. You can visit the um, link at any time shown below. And none of this is possible without dedicated teachers and staff. We have the best around that teach the whole child academically and socially and emotionally. Um, and of course, with strong parental involvement. We couldn't do it without you. Thanks in advance. And you'll hear us repeat that um, in your next eight years um, in the district. 
All right, welcome everyone. Again, I'm Gloria Higgins. I'm the principal of, of Sandpiper School here in Redwood Shores. Um, we are a TK through eighth grade school. And I have the pleasure tonight of talking with you about the curriculum that we use in our district. Um, all of our schools are California um, Common Core Standard aligned, and all of our curriculum is aligned to those standards. So we use um, units of study for readers and writers workshop um, for our language arts curriculum. And you can also see there we have a very strong and highly engaging phonics and um, foundational skills curriculum with super kids. The kids really love that curriculum um, and they get a great foundation in phonics and reading. Um, for our history and social studies curriculum, we use TCI, a very hands-on and experiential um, history curriculum. The kids enjoy um, kind of going through some simulations with those. Um, our math curriculum is math expressions in uh, TK and kindergarten and the elementary grades. Um, and we focus not just on fluency and facts and being able to add, subtract, multiply, and divide, but really understanding the conceptual ways in which mathematicians think um, and solve problems. And that's all part of that math curriculum there. Um, for science, another hands-on curriculum, Twig Science. Uh, the kids get to get out and make a lot of real world observations. And we also have, and I'm very proud to say, we have a strong social emotional learning curriculum in all of our grades. In our younger grades, including TK and kindergarten, we use second step um, for supporting students in recognizing and managing their own feelings and, um, and their emotional states, and then also uh, developing their ability to navigate social situations and uh, manage their relationships with each other as well. Um, in addition to those core areas, um, we have lots of opportunity for play and arts and uh, listening and music activities for our youngest students. Um, we do have La Garza providing PE for us. That's a local contracting agency and the kids get out once a week with their La Garza PE coach and um, more times in the week with their classroom teachers. Um, and we use Leap Art uh, in our district to provide some art experiences and music experiences for our youngest kids. You can see there, there's a standards and roadmaps link um, that will take you to what it is your student is expected to know at each grade level. And these slides will be shared um, with the community and through our newsletter. So you'll have access to those live links as well. You can go on to the next slide, Jerome. Hi, I'm Matthew Nagel. I'm principal of Redwood Shores Elementary School. Uh, we have pre-K through fifth grade there. And this, what you're looking at now is a sample of a daily schedule you might find at any of our district schools. Um, we do start, for example, Redwood Shores at 825 for, for TK, transitional kindergarten. Uh, they have a recess not too long after. And then dismissal is, is half day. But before they are dismissed, they are served lunch um, uh, near, near their classrooms. Kindergarten is the same kind of schedule, but they also have lunch uh, on campus and they have a little bit of time after lunch uh, in which to get their stuff ready, um, be read a book um, and get ready for the next day. Wednesday is a minimum day for uh, all of the district schools, uh, TK and K, and we get out around uh, 12, 15 uh, p.m. That's everyone and traffic's a little heavier that day. Next slide. Uh, universal meals means that any student at any of our district schools is uh, may have breakfast, may have lunch. Uh, it's served in class uh, breakfast as part of the instructional day. Lunch is served outside of the, of the instructional day at TK. It's before we leave at 12 p.m. And with kindergarten, it's um, at lunchtime with a lunchtime recess. And then they back, go back to the uh, classroom to get ready to go home. Uh, communication on how to enroll in the meals program that'll be given out in August, um, but do check our websites and the district website uh, for more information. Families with limited income may qualify for additional services and programs. It is really important that you uh, ask for an application and complete an application as uh, folks on free and reduced price meal status are sometimes eligible for other important programs. Next slide. It, so optional transitional kindergarten preparation, I did teach TK and K not so long ago, 
these are really important things to do. Bathroom skills for TK, they're they're in a on their own. They they need to learn how to use the restroom, and um, anything that we as parents, you as parents, can do in that area really prepares them for navigating the school day. Also, learning how to follow the group plan, being part of a community, even if it's a classroom community or a TK community, uh, is super important. And so that that takes a little bit of, of self-control and really simple practice with these things uh, does the trick. Um, very important, uh, buttoning, snapping, zipping your clothing. Uh, we know the zipping uh, 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 coats and jackets is very difficult for four and five-year-olds at this time of year. Uh, opening their snacks continues all the way through fifth grade in my experience. We're constantly showing them the pinch and pull method and the two fingers together and tear method. And then of course, washing hands. We've all lived in this COVID area and we know how important that is. There, there's one more thing uh, that wasn't on here. I noticed this was um, zipping their backpack and learning how to carry their little backpack is also super important. We, we, we teach a four or five-year-old that all year long. Next slide. Our kindergarten. Um, and in kindergarten, see, transitional kindergarten is preparing them for their kindergarten year. And I was just in my TK classes today. And yeah, practicing and learning how to write their name, um, especially with a capital letter is really good. Learning how to take turns, how to practice their social skills, practicing patience. Uh, they're prepared for that if you're in our district's uh, TK program. Recognizing um, and writing their letters, um, sometimes uppercase and lowercase. And today I was just helping a transitional transitional kindergartner uh, cutting with scissors. They had that backwards method and I was showing them the proper method. And as soon as I left, uh, as I was leaving, he went right back to his old method. <laughs> so it takes time. And then recognizing, counting and writing your numbers to 10. Uh, these are all good things to practice in the summertime. Um, and so we can send them off and, and have a good feeling about it as parents. Next slide, please. For Gloria. And you can go one more. Thank you so much. All right, so lots of information on this slide. And these slides are also available on our district website. I noticed there was some question about if you're not on our newsletter um, distribution list, where can you get the information? They will be on the website for the district as well as um, school sites. Um, but our, por our portal is open now for enrollment. Um, and this is for enrollment in the 24-25 school year. Um, you must complete the online enrollment form and bring a printed version of that, along with the original copies of the required documents to register in person. Um, and all of that can be found on the district website on our enrollment page. Um, our district website is brssd.org. Uh, that's an easier one to remember than all these other words, other ones with slashes and colons and whatnot. But brssd.org, um, and you'll be able to navigate to the enrollment page there. Um, you will need um, all of the items listed here on the bullets. Um, so parent ID or driver's license, an ID card or passport, original birth certificate or passport for your students, proof of residency, immunization records. And if your child has an active IEP or 504, and you would know if they do, um, please bring that as well so we can make sure that they have continuity of services for that. Um, you can go on to the next slide, please. Um, we do have uh, many questions that come up. And as um, Julie mentioned, we're collecting questions in our Q&A and we will publish those. But here are some of the more common ones. Um, yes, you must complete that online enrollment packet. Um, and bring it at the time of registration. You have to have all the documents with you during that, uh, during that appointment, or you'll have to make another appointment and come back with all the documents. Um, there must be a parent or caregiver um, with an ID present at the time of uh, registration. Um, and you don't need both parents. One parent will do, um, or guardian will do, but um, there must be a parent present. Um, both bills providing residency must be under the parent or caregiver's name. Um, if you're not um, the owner of the residence, um, you can get a shared residency affidavit um, to prove that you are residing in that space. I um, mean, you must have all your immunization records in order and up to date 
um, and have them presented at the time of registration. You can move on to the next slide, please. Um, we have an, an incredible staff, as Ms. Eastburn said. Our teaching staff are amazing, and we also have a wonderful team of office staff, um, including uh, right at the district office, Victor Ramirez. He's our um, chief uh, registrar. Um, he handles a lot of the enrollment processes, um, and you can see his contact information there. And then a wonderful team of administrative assistants at all of the school sites. Um, uh, their contact information is there as well. And these people are more than happy um, to help you, welcome you, answer any questions that you might have. Next slide, please. So we do have a number of childcare options for our families in TK and K. It's provided, we, we partner with outside agencies um, there's websites that you can see uh, in the boxes of the of this slide. Contact them directly for more information. You can see that Sandpiper has Champions and Sandpiper Youth Club. And there's San Carlos Belmont Aftercare at Fox and Central. At my school, Redwood Shores, in addition to a few other schools, as you can see, we have footsteps. Um, and our children go there before the school day because we don't have supervision before the instructional day starts at, at Redwood Shores, for example. And then they can go there after when TK ends or when kindergarten ends. Next slide, please. This is an important slide of who is eligible to attend transitional kindergarten. Uh, this current school year, it was open to students who are four years old and their fifth birthday occurred between September 2nd and April 2nd, inclusive. Next year, August, uh, this year, August, excuse me, transitional kindergarten will be open to four-year-olds whose fifth birthday occurs between September 2nd and June 2nd. And then the final year, 25-26, it's going to be open to four-year-olds whose fourth birthday occurs by September 1st, inclusive. Kindergarten is open to any, any child whose fifth birthday occurs by September 1st. First, I'm having trouble with that. But basically, if you to enter kindergarten, your child has to be five by September 1st. It's a firm uh, rule. Next slide, please. That's right. Is this no, one for me, Matt, or are you taking this one? I, I got this slide. I'll introduce it. All right, you. you go. Well, School Force and PTA, uh, they do work together to support all of our students. And we have a big uh, education uh, commitment campaign in the fall. Their mission is to bridge that gap um, between what the state funds and what our children need to have an exceptional uh, educational experience in all of our district schools. They raise funds in the year prior uh, to use. Currently, um, raising money for your child's kinder year. So right now they're raising money for next year, um, for next year's uh, TK and kindergartners. PTA's mission is to impact all children's lives through advocacy and community building at a school site level. PTA raises funds in the year in which they are used. Uh, and then um, Ms. Gloria will take the next uh, few slides and give you a lot more detail about School Force and PTA. Next slide, I forgot. Yeah, there you go. Thanks so much, Matt. Um, yes, we, we know and appreciate the work of parents um, and the amazing uh, foundation that you build for your child. You are your child's first and most influential teacher. Um, and we appreciate all the ways in which you support the work of schools. Um, there are many ways for you to be involved and the more involved you are, the more you send a message to your student that you value um, education and that you think it's important um, that they value it as well. So you could sign up to be a room parent or provide classroom support, or uh, we are always looking for yard duty supervision, um, be a field trip chaperone. Some of you might remember doing that um, with your parents when you were younger. Book fairs, science fairs, special events all through the year are fantastic ways for you to be involved. Um, and all of our schools have what's called a school site council. That is a parent leadership um, opportunity that is really important to guiding the work of the school and the goals and the ways that we spend money um, for your students each year. So plenty to do. Um, and we, we would love to see you and your kids will love to see you here on campuses. You can go on to the next slide. And here you can see we make some really big things happen because of the work and the support that we get 
from the parents and community members in Belmont Redwood Shore School District. Um, last year, we raised more than $3 million to invest in our students and our schools um, for this school year. Um, that means things like science specialists or field trips or art and music happening in the schools. Um, so much happens um, because of the work of parents and these two organizations um, to make our schools truly enriching for our students. Next slide, please. Get a little sense of what BRSSD parents are saying. Um, I don't mean to toot our own horn here, but we are very proud of the work that we do here and very happy to serve the students that you send to us. Um, and you can see there, parents are really satisfied. Um, they find our schools are filled with kindness. Um, we really appreciate fostering the whole child. Um, our community has a common vision for the future. Uh, we have a very strong tradition of excellence in our schools. And we have a tremendous amount of support from our parent community and, lo and local organizations. So again, thank you very much for that. Next slide, please. All right, and as uh, Ms. Eastburn mentioned, um, our Q&A is open. Um, we'll give you guys some time to put some more questions in there. And uh, just taking a moment to acknowledge Jerome Simon, who is the person advancing all those slides and operating the webinar for us. Um, he is our Director of Technology. Thank you very much, Jerome. Um, and again, brssd.org is our district website. Um, that's a good first stop for um, your registration questions, your enrollment questions. These slides will be provided. Recordings of this video will also be provided um, on that website. Um, so you can go back and refer to that. So I'm wondering if um, we can answer a couple of questions. We only have a few more left. We'll give it uh, a try. That I don't have the answer to because I'm not on the site. So um, okay. One of the questions is, do kids in TK need to be fully potty trained? Um, if your child is not fully potty trained um, in TK, we can work with that, but I'm going to strongly encourage um, that your student be fully potty trained um, for kindergarten. Um, it's, a, it's an independence thing for them, um, but if there's a special need, um, we certainly can work with that. And will there be an open house for those new to the school district? Great question. Um, we tend to, or we, we will, um, not tend to, we do schedule um, separate sessions uh, closer to April, May, um, once you know what school your child will be attending um, at each site. So there will be open houses or um, orientations, I think is probably the more appropriate word for that. We don't offer tours through the classrooms during the school day. Um, it's disruptive to the education of the students in the classroom, but we certainly provide playdates in the summer um, and orientation for families, opportunities for students practice getting dropped off and picked up. Those kinds of um, events will happen in the spring and the summer. Um. How do parents get involved with school force and PTA? Ooh, you want to take that one, Matt, or shall I? I'll give it a shot. Uh, well, first of all, uh, both you can you can just check with the uh, school websites. We have links to school force and PTA. And as principal, I'm always uh, uh, willing to um, connect you with them. It's not a problem. Gloria, do you want to add more on that? I think you got it. Um, I will say the the biggest way to. Um, support is with your donation and you'll get a lot of information in the um, fall or in August about how to commit or make a contribution to the education commitment campaign and plenty of opportunities. Uh, you'll get a lot of communication from PTA as well about ways in which you can volunteer. Um, I will answer this question. Uh, which <laughs> schools offer TK? So that is Fox. Cipriani, Sandpiper, Redwood Shores. Mm -hmm. um, the probability of being enrolled in the school closest to our address. Typically, if you enroll in the first enrollment period, um, you, you're likely to get assigned either your first or second closest school. After that, if you're, if you're later than the first enrollment period, it gets a little bit um, 
tight and we have to shift kids to schools other than their first or second closest. Um, is there any after care program and summer camps for TKK and above, Gloria? So the aftercare providers at Sandpiper do support TK um, age students and they pick up from the door right here at Sandpiper. I think it's probably very similar at Redwood Shores. Um, summer camps are run through um, private organizations. They may be running um, programs on our campuses, but those are not school district run or um, activities. So you would need to register through, say, the Redwood City Parks and Rec Department or Belmont Par Parks and Rec Department for those activities. Uh, do you need to register for after school care before you know which school your child is assigned to? Uh, you would need to reach out to each of those aftercare providers to find out what their timeline is. Um, I can speak to Sandpiper um, uh, the Sandpiper Youth Club or Champions at Sandpiper. They do take um, enrollment throughout the year, but they fill up quickly. So I would reach out to them as soon as you think you may be needing their, their services. And Footsteps, again, is not just the my school, but two other schools. So uh, again, I would go to the Footsteps website to find that out. Um, I'll take this one because it, it's come up a couple of times. Do we know when the first day of school is next year? Mm. We do not. Um, we are currently negotiating the calendar, which is um, a yearly process that we do with our labor union. So um, hold tight on that. Um, mm -hmm. Interdistrict transfer decisions. Um, if you intra-district, that's within the district. So if you apply for an intra-district transfer, you may not hear until um, sometime during the summer up to a couple weeks before um, school starts in the fall. And what time does school end on minimum days? Mrs. 12 20 for Redwood Shores, 12 20 p.m. It's different for every school site. It's 12 10 for Sandpiper. Um, and uh, just know it's right about that 12, 10, 12, 15, 12, 20 time frame. Um, and it may depend upon what time your school starts. Again, this is a sample schedule that you see in front of you here. Um, but you will get um, all the details that you need to get um, before August so that you will be well prepared um, for your students first day of school. And that's it. We've answered all of the questions. All right. Excellent. Thank you, everybody, for being here. We look forward to seeing you in the fall and in the future soon. Have a great evening. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you, folks. Bye-bye.